y'all. There's Shiloh. Tell him what's up. What's up, y'all? We got Bob over here. Well, it's a lot different than the last time we were here. It was snowing. Um, and got pretty nice weather for the middle of February. Can't complain. It's about 30 this morning, but right now it's getting up in the 50s. What we're going to do is we're back here. You guys remember we ground this. Um, we have a couple spots we're probably going to acid etch. And we have some crack repair to do. So we're going to be grinding this stuff out here. And I'll show you what we prefer to use on something like this. Um, you have some shrinkage cracks right here. Not a lot of movement in them. Uh, we'll probably go ahead and repair those, but this is a structure crack. crack. There were no saw cuts made in this. And uh, so we're going to grind those out and we'll stitch this one back together. We'll show you how, how we do that. And we have one other crack that we got to repair here. This one's pretty bad, so we'll end up stitching this back as well, and we'll show you exactly how we do that. to show you guys in these cracks i mean this this is a structure crack you know and the reason why this happened is concrete wants to be square and this is a big rectangle this is probably i'm gonna say 20 by you know nine something like that maybe 20 by 10 so it really needed to be cut down the middle so you know not concrete doesn't always listen and go where you want it to but for the most part if you cut it on time in the right place usually it'll crack where you want it and that's all saw, saw cuts are straight cracks i mean it doesn't it doesn't keep that from happening it's just a straight saw cut it cracks all the way down to the bottom and um, a lot of this is out here on fill you can kind of see where this hill um, tapers down all this was leveled up you see it drops way off right there and so I, more than likely that's why this is settled over here so we're going to fill that in and um, so I think the guys got that ready over there and what I'm going to do is go over there when they come over here and start working on this crack we're going to do the same thing grind it out clean it out real good cut some cross cuts in it stitch it back together and then put our rapid set um, crack repair in there and I'm going to show you guys what that is and how we do that all right, so they got everything ground out. So basically what they did is took a four inch grinder and ran it through here, opened this up, getting any chunks and debris and widened it up enough to where we could do a repair. They took the four inch grinder, regular eighth inch blade, just a standard blade and made cross cuts in here. And then they switched to the V groove blade to open this up. That way we got enough room to where we can put our tap corner three inch screws in there and basically stitch this thing back together. So. Uh, it's been cut. It's been vacuumed. We used our little uh, nylon or steel wheel just to get any loose stuff out and was vacuumed again and we found another pretty bad crack here along this edge. There's no saw cuts in this. No expansion. Runs all the way down. Um, and so what I'm doing here is I'm putting the sand in there and what I'm going to show you is what it looks like after you put the sand in. So basically <clears throat> I put the sand in here. And filled it up and then I just take a little brush and I brush it to where it's an eight to a quarter inch down all the way through there and then here since this is a structure crack and this is just a shrinkage crack we're just gonna fill that there's no movement there there is movement there so we're gonna stitch this one back together you can see we put the sand in there we brushed it I dropped these back down in here and basically this is ready to go for our crack repair and um, once we mix that stuff up I'll show you what we do to get that flush um, the one main thing is you want to make sure that you're flush across everywhere So you may have to either cut deeper or turn it see that right there fits good What I do is I take sand. This is dry sand that we keep you do not want to use wet sand um, And basically what I do is just sprinkle some out with my hand and then I just run this brush down through here 
all the way down and then I'll go back over it just to make sure that we're down you know roughly a quarter inch or so something like that and then here's another tip I like to do um, once I get the sand where I like it and say you know it's down close to a quarter inch I take a hammer and I tap on it on both sides see look that's hollow right there which is a little bit concerning so we got to be careful but what this does is if there's say this all right this crack we know goes all the way to the bottom of the concrete well if there's a void between the bottom of the concrete and the subgrade or the ground this stuff is going to fall down in there and so your material that you're putting in here is really expensive and so you don't want it just to flow underneath the slab and keep losing your material so your sand kind of tells on you so you can kind of see right here where it's wanting to go down in there. See that? So what I'll do is end up putting more. You can kind of see it going down right there too. So I'll just keep putting more. See, it's just like disappearing. I'll put it in there. Let's see. That looks good. So you can imagine if there's a void underneath there, I mean, it's just gonna keep flowing under. And so this spot right here, same thing is happening. You see it just kind of disappearing in that one hole. That looks good, so I'll give it another tap. Looks good. So that's one of the things that I do. I like to tap on it with the sand, and then the rest of it's pretty cut and dry. You're just brushing down through there, and make sure and, and brush your cross cuts out enough to get your tap con or screw or whatever you decide to use in there it's just like i said my opinion i like to, to use something with some uh texture on it to where it can't really slip like like uh like a nail if for an example a nail has a head on one end and the other end it's smooth and so there's really nothing on the other end to keep it from from uh from moving so anyways i'm gonna just brush this down through here i'm gonna keep going okay this is the crack filler that we like to use um, it's made by Surf Coat. We use their sealer. We use a lot of their dyes and stains and products. Love the company. Love all the people there. They have great products. Um, so this is basically a, a, a one to one ratio. So one part A, one part, part B. You mix it up. Um, ends up looking like, you know, Coca-Cola, watered down Coca-Cola. And you do not have much time to mess around. Grind as soon as 15 minutes. So use with sand to fill larger voids. That's basically what we did. And um, that also kind of acts as an aggregate for that stuff to lock in and bond to. Now there are different products out there. Some people just use, you know, 100% solids epoxy mixed with Cavasil. But we like this stuff and so we're going to continue to use it. But um, yeah, so I got these little cups here. You can't mix up too much because imagine if you can grind this with a, with a metal blade grinder in 15 minutes. This stuff... You can't mix up too much at once or it will start setting up on you. So we do just enough to where we can fill as much as we can. And then we just go ahead and make more and we'll show you how that works. All right. So we got the other side sand in. We got our tap cons in. Stitches are cut. Shiloh has vacuumed the hell out of this. You can kind of see the line right there. Made sure you got all the dust and debris out. So we're going to do the same thing. Fill this with sand. And then uh, we're going to put our tap cons in and we're going to get ready to fill this stuff up with that polyurethane. We got our material mixed up. It says to mix A and B separately. And then, um, so I basically shook A really good, shook B really good. It was new material we just opened. And then you mix A and B together for approximately 30 to 55 seconds. And then you basically just go through and pour it. I'm going to do just a little bit because it's hard to do with my left hand. And so I'm basically just pouring it in this crack. I'm doing a shitty job because uh, I'm not left-handed. But this stuff dries super fast. You got about maybe five minutes to use it before it gets hard and you can see um where it's been rubbed out so you can use a trowel you can do all kind of different shit but i like to use my hand like shiloh's doing here and just basically rub it back and forth and press that sand in there and make sure you're getting it right there flush to the top um you don't want to leave a whole bunch like that because then you got to grind it and you want to try to make the least amount of work as possible kind of like this spot over here that where that crack is that's pretty good you know so we'll dust off and get any of the stuff away as we can and i gotta haul ass and keep going here so i've i've dumped that stuff out now i'm basically just gonna put some more sand on top and it'll go down in there and i one another point so like over here right here 
I didn't mean to get it there. What you want to do is just put a little bit of sand on it so that way it has some tooth because basically it's epoxy and we're doing an overlay so it would be a slick spot but that sand gives it tooth for the overlay to bond. And so you want to make sure if you spill any or drip any, they just put a little bit of sand over it. It's all you got to do. It just gives it tooth for that overlay. And so I'm going to keep riding out here. All right, we got our crack filler in. And this stuff is literally rock hard. I mean, it's probably been 20 minutes. And basically what we're doing is going through. And uh, you could do this a million ways with this texture. It depends on what you're doing, but we're going to be pouring like a skim coat over top of this and leveling all leveling it all up or just filling in the stamp pattern to where it's smooth again so we're just taking a scraper and uh let me find a spot down here we haven't done and basically i'm just running this scraper because the sand this rough sand here gives a good texture for that overlay to bite to so you don't really have to grind it in this case there are some cases you have to grind it flat but we're going to be basically leveling this thing up and we're just scraping off and then shallow sweeping it into piles and then we'll end up blowing the stuff off and get ready for our overlay. All right, this pro bond material we're putting down does not require primer. We like to prime anyways. It just kind of helps the concrete not suck all the moisture out of our overlay. Uh, once again, this is just kind of a base coat to fill in all the stamped area. We have Dawn dish soaked it. We have acid etched it. Um, we ground it first and cleaned it, blew it off. And so the guys are rolling down this primer. Just is kind of like an extra precaution. Um, and we're working our way this way. I'm using a chip brush. And going around these edges and we're going to get this thing primed and uh start mixing some stuff up by the time we're done mixing we should be ready to put this stuff down all right we got our second batch here we're doing two bags at a time uh drew is running some out along the edge shiloh's trialing it up against the wall and then i'm pulling it with a magic trial you can tell we need to do another coat of this but it's basically just a thin coat to kind of get all the ups and downs and the grout lines filled in and then we'll pour, pull another coat over this and it should get pretty close to smooth after that. Um, so I know we're going to need one more coat of this just to kind of help fill it in. But uh, this is a good start here.